All right, so take number two, because I had my phone gone off in the last one. Um, I wanted to go over a couple of ways to make some wires and curves and, and that kind of stuff, because there are plenty of ways to do this, and a lot of them are very quick, uh, very slow. Um, I try to avoid physics simulations wherever possible, um, because those are really difficult to control. Um, so starting off from the left, if you wanted to do a pile of hanging curves, this feels like one of those things that would be kind of difficult to do um, without just spending a bunch of time doing that. So this over here is called a catenary curve. Um, as it turns out, if you add couple of empties, select them, enable uh, extra curves add-on, and under not, so you go to catenary, you get like a perfect curve between two arbitrary points. Um, adding a bunch of empties and changing this value over here seems a little bit slow. You could potentially do it, but I figured there's got to be a better way. Um, so as it turns out, if you add a path and then let's say you delete, uh, delete the end over here, uh, dissolve the center, put your cursor over there, go in here, put the endpoint into the cursor, take the thing, subdivide in half, and then go to uh, over here, endpoint you enabled and order three and pull this down that is too close to be an accident that is exact so i thought armed with this knowledge i think we can do a lot of curves very quickly so I'm gonna bring this up here, uh, delete the ends, and I'm gonna set, actually this time I'm gonna select the middle, this is already set up good by default, if you um, dissolve that, you'll get the wrong order, so that's why it's important. Uh, you go over here, do that, and then under geometry, I'm just control clicking to open one at a time, uh, you sort of Expand that a little bit, and then Shift Duplicate, Shift R, get a bunch of curves, transform, randomize transform. That's that's exactly one curve. Uh, transform, randomize. There we go. I already had my settings set up from the last time, so the only thing I did here was change the location. Uh, the rotation on the Z and then scale on Z and you could potentially also change the length because the origin is at this start and then to get rid of the squishing we we'll just apply the scale and there you go you can do as many as you like if you don't like the the thickness I think it's too thick right now uh, what you can do is alt click on any of these options and change everything at once. If you're using emulate middle middle mouse button, uh, you'll find that all clicking does nothing. So you'll have to press down your mouse button first, then press your alt key, and then if you move things, then it works. There you go. That's that's that. That was pretty quick. You can do as many as you like or place these curves in the in manually and go here the only only rule is that you have to go straight up and down with this one even if you go up here or down here the this is still the perfect catenary but if uh, as soon as you as soon as you move this then it doesn't work anymore so just keep this middle vertex right in the middle and pull it down um so the next one, uh, with this one you'd, you'd be tempted to 
start messing with uh, Bezier curves or, or, or simulations or some kind of stuff like that, but um, the fastest way that I found to do that is um, add a plane. Just go to an edit mode and merge everything in the center and I'll just extrude some vertices like that. Pull this up just a little bit. Go in your modifier panel. This is called modifier list. I like how it, how it has these shortcuts. Uh, you add a skin modifier. Go in edit mode and scale it all down a little bit. And then subdivision, copy, and another subdivision. Uh, I did something wrong. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so that's just increase that a little more. And then to get this smooth, you have to go in the skin modifier and apply smooth shading. There you go. So, benefit of this is that it's really quick and easy to kind of design your wire and then if you go over here just gonna isolate these move this over here and this over there and then this one on on the ground I think and then that over there, and then maybe it just goes over here a little bit. And that was pretty quick. You can do uh, do another one by just duplicating the vertex. Uh, but if you do that, it doesn't work because I have to select it and mark as root. Every individual strand always needs a root. So let's do another one if you like. Pull these ones up a little bit. There you go. And to be able to do these kind of things, it's kind of the same thing, except I added a bevel in the start. So we just have your bevel modifier. Add, add an edge, then you add a bevel modifier on vertex mode. Change uh, the width as you like. Uh, I'm actually gonna separate that with the P key so I can make that a little wider this time. And then, sorry. And the way I'm moving these on axis so quickly is by um, first activate your transform then hold the the orbit key which is either the middle mouse or alt left click depending on your setting and this this line in the middle is what determines the axis so just whichever one it is closest to it selects you'll get used to this very quickly and i believe this is the fastest way to um select an axis. And if you want, just want to select the ground plane, you would select the top and then hold shift. So now it's stuck to the ground. Kind of hard to see, but... Yeah, so if you, if you do that, you get, get pretty quick with this. And then just enable your skin modifier. And if you see these kind of things where it kind of squishes, that's because the it doesn't like when the verts are like right next to each other, so you just pull it apart a little bit. Uh, scale down. I don't know what the hotkey for scaling is. I have to find that. Let's go skin resize. Um, maybe be able to hit your search key and do skin resize. For me, it's Alt G um, because I rebound it. That's how you'll be able to find that. And then just add a subdivision at the end to make it smooth. And you can kind of imagine these being like scaffolding or, or, or some kind of pipes in, in, the, in the walls or um, 
carrying water or oil or something like that or just like parts of machines and something like that so the benefit of doing it this way is that you'll be able to work with your your vertices and and meshes exactly how you like and these bevels are still adjustable like maybe you want to have them be like 45 degrees instead or uh, maybe if you're doing a doing a mesh for a game you can have your high res with super high subdivision and then your game res with a single subdivision or something like that and um, generally here if I do a game res I would add a um, decimate planar and then just do like 0 0.1 degrees and that will get rid of most of the unnecessary edges let's add a couple more segments you can kind of see um, the last one is uh, this kind of scaffolding over here you can already see that the wireframe modifier is how it do that uh, so just add a cube just go in the bottom and lift that up on the ground and then uh, select the floor plane as my scaling axis move this over here I delete the top add one on the top one in the middle a couple cuts in the center and one there and then just wireframe increase that a little bit boundary on and then just bevel those edges a little bit and shady smooth so you could do like um, um, you, you could do like a like a balcony or something like this or, or some fire escape or you add another subdivision here you could do shopping baskets or something and the cool thing about this is that these are like really quick to make so if you wanted to have some kind of a scaffolding or something that's probably how you do that and then uh, one thing that somebody showed me is if you add a uh, triangulate modifier you'll get these kind of wires in the middle and that sort of looks like if you add to that and add a, add a bunch of cuts like that that could be like a beam at the top of a um, stage or something like that and those are really quick to make just disable the subdivision for that uh, and that can get different orientations this way there you go so there's a there's a couple different ways of making wires and scaffolding and um, and pipes and all kinds of stuff that doesn't take too long not too difficult to make um, hopefully this will save you a bunch of time um, and if you have any questions about my setup or or any any problems you run into i stream on twitch every day so come by and and have some have a chat over there that's the best way to contact me i think um so yeah i'll catch you later thanks for watching